<laughs> Again, it is nothing like that. So you saw the good, now it's time for the bad. Hopefully this video does not get me in trouble. Hopefully this isn't like the last time you see me. Now the first thing that I really really dislike is that your privacy is gone. So because you're working for the government, basically they monitor you like a hawk. They see everything you do, they know everything you do. There's just way too much security. And I know that could be sort of controversial because you know they want to be secretive and they want to protect you know private information. Like how it affects you individually, it's just too much. So you're always under a close watch, even you know just entering the gate of my facility. Like they have guns and guards and you know patrols that are watching every single visitor no matter what you're doing. Even if you're just like there to deliver pizza, they're gonna monitor you like crazy. And even as an employee there, when you're working there, when you're just trying to you know, enter the entrance, it's still sort of scary. As I'm working on their you know, projects using their government laptop, I can't even visit some certain websites. I'm not talking about the bad ones, I'm talking about like even government websites. So for example, some of like the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, that website is blocked. Even some of the Air Force websites that they created, that they generated themselves, the one that has .gov at the end of it, it's still blocked. I have to get special permission from their IT people just to enter that website. Just to install a program that they created themselves for Air Force personnel. I can't even do that. I have to get special permission from you know, data security from their IT people just to do that. So definitely you cannot do anything personal on a government laptop, but even on a personal level, when you're working for them, for example, like even for business or when you own like stocks, you can't even own certain stocks. You can't even own marijuana stocks, for example, because it's illegal federally. As of the time of me creating this video, it's still not legal. And I know there's like some ethical issues there, but again, on your individual lifestyle, like you just choosing a stock that you want to own because you know it might make money, and you know, that's sort of too personal. That's too much control. Whether or not you support certain things, it still shouldn't be controlled like that. So your privacy is gone. Like you've entered the belly of the beast and you know you can't get out at that point. Once you enter, like there's no going back. So just a warning. The next reason that I don't like about working for the Air Force is that it's a really slow and boring growth in terms of like job opportunity. So yes, the job is good. I mean, it's stable, it pays pretty well, but there's not much more that you can do. There's not much more that you can learn. So right when I got hired, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of pressure to learn. But once you receive all that information, within like a few months or a, you know, a couple of years, you're sort of stuck there, doing the same thing, the boring tasks, same thing over and over again. I mean, yes, you might have some you know, random surprises here and there, but it's not something new every single day. If you know the government, they take a while to roll things out. They take a while to like, you know, implement a few things. You know, it takes years for construction projects to actually happen, you know, starting from right when they want to do it to when it actually completes. Like it takes like five to 10 years. So it's not really a career that you can like grow and develop in. There's not much room for growth unless, you know, someone leaves. So if my boss leaves, then yeah, I can take his position. But why would my boss want to leave? You know, he could be there for like 10, 20 years. So that means I'm stuck where I am for 10 to 20 years. They're not really going to open up a new position unless, you know, something really happens. But the odds of that happening is pretty low. So working for the government really is just designed for unambitious, maybe older people who just, you know, want to stay comfortable. So, I mean, if you're on that same boat, it's fine if you want to do that. For me personally, I'm not into that. I like just to keep growing and, you know, maybe if after two years I'm bored, then I would be willing to leave. You know, I just want to be straight up with that. Next is politics. So you're going to hear it everywhere at your work. You're going to see it everywhere at your work, no matter where you're working. But for the Air Force, like in the military and government in general, like we are straight up telling you that like, there are politics. You know, there's a president. There's certain people down the chain. You might not like the politics at your work, but at my work, it is designed specifically for that. Like, there's a hierarchy that we have to abide by. And that's just the way it is. Like it's designed again for that reason. Now the politics, they can be a good thing or a bad thing. It depends on really who your boss is. So if the big boss man is like really, really chill and happy, then you know, your work life would be pretty chill and happy. It'd be like a pretty good, easy day for you, depending on how long he's gonna stay there. So if he leaves and some other, maybe not chill guy shows up and it's a very demanding and strict person, then your life would not be as fun. So the rules can change. Everything that I said that was good about it, can change in like an instant depending on whoever is in charge. So basically the politics and your work experience will all depend on whoever's above you and if they want to make your life more difficult then they will and that's just how it is. You cannot change anything about it no matter what you say it'll probably be censored or you know just blocked. They wouldn't even like care about it because that's just how they roll. 
And the bad thing about that is that you knew what you're getting yourself into. You signed up for it, you, again, you know that there's a hierarchy there, so expect the worst but hope for the best. And lastly, you know, this is probably the most frustrating thing to see, especially if you're not working in the military, is that we waste so much money on dumb things. So the military, the government, here in America, we get funded by your taxes, by the taxpayers, you know, by regular people working, civilians, employees, everyone gets taxed, you know, even I get taxed, so part of my contribution is going into this. So we have a budget every single year that we have to spend. And again, that budget is funded by your tax dollars. So thank you for your contribution, you know, thank myself too. But sometimes we have too much money. And that's sort of contradicting, right? You have too much money? Like, can't we just give it back to us? No, it doesn't work that way. So for example, let's say we get $1 million, again, through your taxes, that we have to spend for the entire year. And of course, there's some projects that we have to do. Let's say we want to do some research on something and it'll cost like $500,000 to get that funded. So that's fine, you know, we're actually using that $500,000 for a purpose, you know, a good reason. We do that, we get some project, and then now we're more efficient or, you know, maybe we hired some other people. So we're getting progress on some goal. But now, for example, let's say, again, you gave us a million dollars for that year, we only used 500000 for that year. So now we have left over 500000 So what are you going to do with it? Technically, they cannot give us raises. They cannot, like, put more money into other people's salary or, you know, benefit or something. They have to spend it for a certain purpose. And has to be, you know, by the book, very strict on that. It has to be, like, for environmental reasons, let's say. It can't just be, you know, Randy performed well this year, let's give him, like, a $100,000 increase. You know, that'd be amazing. But it doesn't happen that way. So now they have $500,000 surplus and they have to think of a good reason that is like environmental related. So now they have to make excuses basically and say, okay, what can I spend on that is $500,000 worth on a good environmental positive? Oh, I know. Let's start buying some good electric vehicles. Or let's buy some more efficient appliances. Okay, you know, that sounds good on paper, but when they actually execute that, now we're having way too much and, you know, more than we need and it's not really even used that much. And the bad thing is that it happens every single year. So imagine like buying some very high performance electric vehicle, that's good for the first year, but next year, you still have more money. Like, what are you gonna do with that? I don't really need another car. I don't need 10 of them, I only need one of them. So now we're buying more and more, you know, high performance, efficient, environmental positives here, but it's not being used. We have too much, actually. The surplus is good because you know we get to spend on what we need but what we need is pretty small so now we're just buying junk basically straight up that's what i'm trying to say we're just buying useless junk with your tax dollars and i'll give you a real life example right now currently it is july 2021 so the fiscal year is going to end like i think september october for us i have about thirty thousand dollars to spend on office supplies yes that's right office supplies i could probably go to the office depot right now and like buy the entire store and they'd be okay with it. It's because we have so much money to spend on business related stuff, on things that will help personnel, you know, work more efficiently. So let's say, for example, someone needs like a pencil or a pen to, you know, do their work. That's fine. But do they really need $30,000 worth of pencils? Again, we cannot donate this money. We cannot switch from one item to another. We cannot give it to someone's salary. It must be spent or else the headquarters up there, you know, people way up there, they'll say, oh, you didn't spend this money? then we'll just take it out next year. We won't give you that amount anymore. We won't give you a million dollars. We'll just probably cut it in half. So now I know we are limiting our purchasing power, but let's say, for example, we do need some extra money for some other project. We won't know the future. So at the end of the year, basically, thank you for your tax dollars. We're just gonna spend it on useless junk like 10,000 more pens. I literally have like a whole shed full of just pencils that are just sitting there and I'm pretty sure it's gonna get filled with more pencils this year. It's just so frustrating because, you know, there's so much more that we can do on certain projects, but it's limited. So we exhausted those $500,000 funds for projects, but we have $30,000 worth of office supplies that we can buy. Of course, using my big brain here, I want to move that $30,000 from office supplies into funding more projects, but we can't. We can't do that. It has to be spent specifically for that purpose, and if not, it'll just go away. And now you're probably thinking, can't we just ask for more money for a certain project and lower that amount for office supplies? Yes and no. I'm not into that realm. I'm not dealing with those people. It's more so my boss and my managers that deal with that, but they don't do that. Politics, right? <laughs> so again, all these sort of negative aspects do go in hand with each other. They sort of enhance the badness of each other. So again, you waste too much money? Well, talk to your boss about it. Oh, he doesn't want to do it? Politics. That's the reason why.
So those are the list of bad things that I don't like about working for the, you know, the Air Force or just the government in general. Hopefully you'll still see me post next week after this video. Please don't kill me. That's all I have for this video. If you want, you can like, subscribe, and just you know, leave a comment if you have any questions. I try to get back to you, but I cannot answer any specific military questions. I did not join the Air Force, so don't ask me. I will not be answering that. And I'll see you in the next video. That's all I have. Goodbye.